welcome everyone for Place Making MENA, Make a Place with People for the People uh, lecture series uh, for under the umbrella of LILCOL uh, project. Uh, LILCOL project is initiated by Place Making MENA platform members and I will give you a few, a small brief introduction later on. So first of all, please make sure your microphone is mute and uh, please use the chat section to ask questions uh, while our lecturers are presenting their uh, projects and their research. Uh, meanwhile, you will have room to ask live questions, of course, and have a small debate. Um, so this session is recorded and streamed live. So for those who doesn't want to, uh, you know, to turn on their, their camera, they, they are also, they have to be acknowledging that. So if you have any inquiry, you can email us at placemakingmena at gmail.com. So let's see. So who we are first. So Placemaking Mena platform, it's a platform gathering partners from the Middle East and countries such as professionals, practitioners, activists, municipalities and organizations adopting placemaking concept, placemaking approach as an ethos to improve and activate public spaces. So we work with the people and for the people. This is our um, objective. So we want to promote place making in the MENA region and as well, um, you know, um, try as much as we can to reflect and also to use people-centered approach within the context of our countries to support local communities in transforming their public spaces into Beatles places because placemaking is about have an approach to be able to have vitalized play public places and as well to be able to establish um, a kind of collective management of these spaces, which we call the common. So we work on what? We work on making the built environment meaningful, healthier, and more human to maximize, facilitate, and a creative patterns of use and to pay particular attention to the physical, cultural and social identities that define a place and support its evolution. So we want to promote free dynamic recreational public spaces for cultural activities with spatial focus on socially fragmented city and underprivileged neighborhoods. And we want to promote place making as an approach and as a possible strategy for peacemaking through social inclusion interaction among different community groups. And most of all, we want to enhance volunteerism and civic engagement spirit through involving youth. So geographically extension of place making MENA platform, it covers all the MENA countries. And to, today we are actively uh, working in nine of them. And we will hope that um, next year, it will be the year where we will be all over the MENA region in terms of research, design and build projects, and you know, to foster more this collective intelligence. So what we did, we, did, we took a challenge. We said, uh, it's the COVID-19 and we wanted to do something uh, within this context. Um, and we thought about a pilot project, which will be the co-op self-organization. And this is, it will be much more clear through our lecture series and also through um, the project itself that will start, it start today is the kickoff of LILCOL project and it will continue until next year. And um, it's LILCOL project, it's a pilot online incubation of placemaking projects. So we will be helping through a workshop of coaching, lecture and giving the tools to help a group of participants within the MENA region to be able to implement um, and develop their placemaking project with the community. And of course, this is, uh, will be done through uh, different, as I said, studio times, uh, online studio times, through um, you know, introducing what is the concept of placemaking, its philosophy, the methodology, how we can develop a project idea to implementation, and of course, we will be focusing more about human-centered design and also participatory different approaches. 
And what is really interesting in that is like, basically we won't take things for granted. We'll be also criticizing a bit the tools that are already set and to be able to reflect upon them within the context of MENA region. We know exactly that our context is quite different. Our communities are different. The notion of public space is different. And for the such, it's also a great research project. So LILCOL project, it's we have today, we selected, we had 16 proposals uh, from the MENA region, from Iraq, from Tunisia, from Egypt, from Lebanon. And we end up, of course, based on fair criteria to select seven teams and seven projects, especially that they have already a project idea that is much likely to be implemented within next year. So we have the team for, teams from Lebanon, from Jordan, from Egypt, and from Sudan. So um, the lectures that we will have, they are included within LILCOL. And we thought it will be nice also to have them within a public lectures to share them with a wide audience and to share our knowledge. So we have eight lectures in four sessions. Uh, we have transforming cities and public space through placemaking today with Roni. We will have social and cultural aspect of public space in the MENA region with Francesco. We will have rehab placemaking Lebanon, placemaking art pieces in public spaces, Placemaking and rebuilding collective identity, think global, act local with Reem. And the story of Kaukaba, uh, if I said it right, with Karina. And circularity, refugeehood, and placemaking in Iraqi Kurdishian, the Syrian refugee camp case with Laila Zibar. And we'll have coexistence through placemaking with myself. So, and today I'm happy to have my colleagues and also my friends at uh, um, Roni and Francesco uh, with two lectures, Transforming Cities and Public Spaces Through Placemaking. Roni, he's a founder and uh, placemaking expert. He's an activist and practitioner of placemaking. He developed his curriculum for university course and workshop and provides courses, lectures, and workshops throughout Lebanon, MENA region, and abroad, and transfer the learning through hands-on activities using different participatory design tools. Using placemaking approach, his work aims to increase the provision of public space through joining the efforts of different local actors. Roni holds a master's degree in urban planning, bachelor's degree in agriculture engineering and political science. He's a senior advisor, leader and regional network leader, MENA region in placemaking X, and a senior fellow of PPS Project for Public Space Organization and leader in placemaking Europe network. For Francesco, he's an architect, he's Francesco Polesello, architect and urban design, associate professor. He graduated at IUAV in Venice and holding a master's degree in urban design from USC Los Angeles, PhD candidate at La Sp Sapienza University in Rome. During the professional activity of more than 30 years, he developed an architectural urban design and urban pl planning projects in Europe and MENA region. He also participated in many architectural and urban design competition worldwide, receiving prizes and mentions, published in international magazines in this long period of activity. He also worked in Africa, Kazakhstan, and Lebanon. The academic activity started at IUAV in Venice, saw him participating in seminar and workshop between Italy and Lebanon, where he has plural experience in local universities, teaching architectural and urban design mainly, but also theory of architecture and urbanism. He wrote a series of articles and papers on the team of public spaces and the relation between architecture and the city, continuing his main interest in the domain of urban design. Actually, he lives in Lebanon since 2015. So thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, we will start, of course, with Roni, uh, with your lecture. So up to you to share your screen and Okay, Th thank you. And I think uh, you got a message that, that some, some people are waiting for, for you to let them in. Uh, yes, I will do so. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so can you? Yes, you can see it very well. Okay. 
Yeah, you can. Can you see? So some people are wait are still waiting or no is it okay? I'm, I'm admitting everyone. Yes. Oh, admitting everybody. Okay. So shall we wait or I, th I think we have to to you start. You can start because we are already live. Yeah, you can start. Okay, great. So thank you and stuff for the introduction and thank you all for uh, for being part of this uh, challenge. This is really a challenge that we wanted to start together. Uh, so I'll be talking uh, about placemaking, as uh, as uh, Insaf uh, said. It's about uh, exploring together placemaking as a concept, as a methodology, as a philosophy as well. So, uh, but first of all, uh, why, let's start, why it is important to, to talk about placemaking and it's important to, to talk about public spaces uh, in these days. Uh, first of all, uh, in the Sustainable Development Goals for uh, 2030, uh, and in the uh, Sustainable Goal 11, uh, talking about sustainable cities and communities, uh, we highlighted the role of public spaces. So if you want to have sustainable cities and sustainable communities, we have to have good public spaces. So they talk about public spaces, inclusive public spaces, accessible, green public spaces. So it is really important in, in our agenda for the 2030. Uh, in addition, uh, if, we want, if we, want, we want to talk about urban, the new urban agenda that were signed in Quito in 2016, uh, the agenda which is guiding the efforts of uh, around urbanization for, for the next 20 years uh, contains more than nine uh, paragraphs talking about uh, public space uh, as, uh, and, and, and attributing key role to public spaces, you know, and uh, uh, giving the impact of public spaces as drivers for social and uh, economic development. Uh, uh, yeah, I will ask just uh, everyone to mute, mute their microphones, please. We have a background noise. Yeah, is it your <laughs> <laughs> So I will try to ask everyone to mute. So I will see now. Here we go. So normally everybody's in mute. So we will see. Um, yeah, you can continue, Ronnie. Go ahead. Okay, great. So uh, before talking about public spaces, let's talk about place. Uh, what is the what is the place? Uh, in 1977, Yi Foot Wan, uh, he was a Chinese American humanistic geographer. He was the first one to talk about difference between spaces and the places. So uh, for him, space is a realm without meaning. It's like a fact of life producing the basic coordinates of human life. And he said that when we invest meaning uh, in a portion of, of a space, and then uh, we became uh, attached to this uh, uh, part of space, it becomes uh, a place. So a place, it's more about uh, space with, with feelings, with, with meanings. Like we can see in the pictures uh, here in Turkey or, or even the uh, previous picture uh, for, for kids, you know, when, when you go to the park with kids, they have their own places. They like to, to, to stay there. So it's because there is, there is feelings there. And uh, if we talk about uh, Jane Jacobs, the American Canadian journalist, uh, she, she talked about social scenes. Uh, in her book, uh, The Death and Life of Great, uh, Greater American Cities, she said that uh, public spaces like public uh, gardens, like uh, public uh, markets, or even community gardens, or even public libraries uh, can serve as social teams, you know, or places where uh, we can have different uh, community groups coming together. Uh, so, uh, in, in, in these uh, terms, we, we, we attribute a lot of uh, uh, social aspect to public spaces. So uh, if we can define public spaces, it is a, a social 
space that is open to all. And public space uh, it has could have uh, could have a different nature and scale, uh, starting with a bench in the street, park, piazza, playground, and oh, uh, and any other governmental uh, open public spaces. In the uh, charter of uh, public spaces, uh, if you have the the want to to to, to talk about definition. Uh, the former definition of public spaces in the Charter of Public Spaces, uh, all places of use accessible and enjoyable by all for free and without a profit motive. And uh, I think this definition captured the spirit of public space as a common good uh, that promote uh, the well-being uh, of the community. Uh, so to, to support uh, again the sustainable cities and strong, uh, stronger communities, we should plan properly our public spaces. And uh, I think to, to plan properly our public spaces, we have, we have the only way to do it properly is to do it in a participatory approach. Uh, so this is what we will be talking about, how we can, uh, in a participatory way, we can plan for our public spaces in the city. Uh, the participation that uh, can uh, can uh, build interaction between people and and the space and between people uh, together. Uh, the concept of the place people centered approach and the and the place it's not new. It started in the sixties when uh, several researchers and journalists on different continents uh, criticized uh, the urban planning for having forgotten uh, life in the city. Uh, like William White, Jane Jacobs again, and Jan Gill. So they believe uh, that participation is really crucial and uh, participating people is very important for the improvement of the public spaces and for the city. And uh, uh, therefore, for the quality of life in these cities. So uh, they explain that uh, when local people uh, are engaged in the design uh, of uh, the urban public spaces, they continue to enjoy and to care about these spaces. They help in creating. So, uh, and this, uh, of course, can lead to a sense of the community ownership and appropriation. Uh, different methods and tools uh, based on uh, people participation were proposed as key approaches to cities and urban spaces within uh, social theory analysis. Uh, starting uh, 2010 till now, we have uh, different approaches and different tools and different of, uh, of participatory approach. So uh, let's start in 2010, uh, Jan Gill uh, was a Danish from in, in Copenhagen in Europe. He was, he was Danish, he's Danish and uh, architect and uh, urban uh, design. Uh, he talked a lot about uh, cities for people. And he emphasizes on four human essential issues to successful cities. Uh, like cities with full of life, uh, safe cities, sustainable cities, and healthy cities. And uh, in his book, he, he, uh, he talks a lot about how we can create uh, and recreate city spaces on a human scale. Uh, in 2013, in uh, New York, uh, Brandon Crane uh, adopted what he called a hand, handmade urbanism. Uh, it talks about uh, community initiative. Uh, so it started from the community. So if you, we can see the picture, it's something very, very, very simple. And it can start with the initiative of the community. But he uh, said that uh, this urban uh, uh, concept relies uh, heavily on a strong network uh, of partners. So 
he emphasized on how we can network with different uh, urban actors in the same city. Uh, again, in 2013, uh, Charles uh, Gomriz talked a lot about happy cities. He, he has always the same question. Are we happy in our cities? Are, are we happy? Are, are we uh, uh, enjoying cities in our neighborhood, in our streets? Uh, he raised a lot of issues asking about uh, this question, the same question. And he said that small innovation can uh, improve in a radical way uh, our experience. He, he does not talk about big, big, big. He, he talked a lot, emphasizes on small innovation ideas, like in the picture, putting a piano in the street and letting uh, the, the, the playing music. Uh, in 2014, down into America, uh, in Brazil, in Curtiba, uh, Jamie Lerner, he was the uh, former mayor of, of, of the city or Curtiba. He was urbanist as well. He talked about uh, urban acupuncture. Uh, for him, the public spaces are the living room. Uh, of, of like the living room is the the main uh, room in the in the uh, at home. For him, the public space is the living room of the city. So where uh, urbanity happens for him, and uh, he said that we don't have to to have large large intervention, but we have to have some uh, uh, small scaled intervention and not expensive at all to transform and to give impact to the city. So uh, he, uh, it's the, the, the same uh, idea of acupuncture. So to have like small inter intervention in, a, in, a, in a small areas. Uh, and finally, before talking about placemaking, the tactical urbanism uh, 2015 with uh, Mike uh, Lydon. He was an uh, American writer and planner in uh, New York as well. Uh, he talked a lot about uh, uh, quick and low cost intervention. Like for him, short term action can lead to long term. So uh, he used the streets to, to have uh, some pop up activities, pop up park, pop up uh, swimming pool. So small initiative that have really uh, power to the city to, to have some changes in the, la in the uh, daily life of, of, uh, of, of the citizen in, in the city. Uh, here we arrive to placemaking. I wanted to just to, to make an introduction to placemaking and to see what could be a difference between, uh, between all these uh, concepts. Uh, for pla placemaking, the first time the, the term that came uh, into use by architects and plan planners, landscaping in the 70s, back in the 70s. And the idea derived, uh, of course, from the work of Jane Jacobs and from uh, William White. This is at least the claim of the Project for Public Space Organization. I will talk about uh, PPS later on. Uh, so I think the 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 uh, uh, the godfather of the placemaking is is uh, William White. William White uh, from New York. He, he is American urbanist, analyst, journalist, and people watcher. It's a really important people watcher because he spent uh, most of his life on the rooftop of the buildings with us and trying to, to, to film how people are interacting in public spaces. And in the 80s, uh, he published the findings of uh, his, uh, his movies in, in a book uh, called The Social Life of Small Urban Spaces. Uh, and this publication was, uh, was with, with, the, with the book, was with, with, the, with the movie as well. At the same time, he launched the movie as well. The, the book and the movie, they, they had a mini revolution at that time in the planning and study of uh, public spaces. And it appears uh, as a, a reading reference list uh, 
for urban planner, for sociologist, for uh, anthropologist, for uh, people studying environmental uh, studies. So uh, it, it was really a, a revolution at, at that time. So from the quotes of uh, William White, it's, he said that it's hard to create space uh, that will not attract people. Like in the 70s and back in the 60s, we have a lot of buildings and spaces and without any attraction for people to come and to spend time there. And one of the important uh, uh, quote is what attracts people is other people. And this is really important because if you want to go to the, I don't know, to the, go to, to dinner, now that we have in confinement, now we, we are in COVID-19, we cannot go out. But if we want to go out and we have to go in a restaurant, we don't go to the restaurant empty ones. We see where is where we have more people and we go there. So what attracts people is, is other people. This is really a, a reality. And he said, as if you want to see a place with activity, put out food. These are, uh, you know, ideas on how we can uh, activate our, our public spaces. Uh, as well, uh, he said, it's not right to put water before people and then keep them away from it. So uh, sometimes we have in, uh, in our public spaces a lot of features with water and we are not allowed to go there. So for him, for him if to, to, to put any feature in the public space, we have, we have to have it functional and we have to, uh, to, to make use of it. Uh, in the 70s, uh, he was a big friend to, to, uh, to William White, Fred Kent. He was founder and former president of PPS, and he speaks uh, widely on public space and uh, place making for more than, than 50 years. So uh, he was uh, inspired by, by the work of, of William White and of Jane Jacobs, and he founded the organization called PPS. And uh, PPS, uh, uh, and the, the play, place making through PPS uh, started to be a, a, a global movement in all over the world. It takes a place to create a community and to create a place, one of the quotes of uh, uh, Fred Kant. Uh, so uh, Project for Public Spaces organization, it was found in 70, 75 by uh, Fred Kant. It is a non-profit organization. They adopted placemaking uh, and have a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot uh, of uh, different uh, uh, topic and tools related to placemaking. And it uh, it became the first center for the best practices and uh, resources for placemaking. It, it's still existing. So uh, Fred Kent was former uh, president, and now he he's not. He's the only the, the founder of, of, of this organization. Uh, so uh, placemaking, uh, uh, it is a paradigm shifting. Uh, from uh, focusing on, on buildings to focusing on, on, on uh, spaces between buildings. Uh, so uh, placemaking, if we wanna uh, define a placemaking, uh, it is a people-centered approach to the planning, designing and management of public space. So uh, not, we have to, to involve the, the community, the, the people, uh, from from the from the first beginning, from the planning to the designing, execution till the management of public space. So, it's not only an approach to implement public spaces, improvement of public spaces. It is a spatial uh, design and planning uh, from the beginning, and even management of the public space and activation of public space. So placemaking is both a comprehensive idea and hands-on uh, tools, activities, for improving a, neighbor, a neighborhood, city, or a region. It involves looking at, listening to, and asking 
question to people to discover needs and aspirations. So in the process in the, uh, of, of placemaking, of doing placemaking uh, field assessment, we have a lot of observation, we have a lot of question to ask the people, because for us, the people are better than, uh, than us. So they are there, they live there, they, 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 they play there. So they, they work there, so they know about the place better than us. So we have a lot of uh, asked a question, we have a lot of listening, we have a lot of smell even. We have to, to use all our senses uh, when doing the, the uh, space. Uh, it's a, a process through which we collectively shape our public green to maximize the shared value. So uh, uh, we have to maximize our mobilization. We have to involve all the, the, the actors in, in the public space. Uh, it is a community process, as, as I said before. So it is based on a, a people-centered approach. It is localized. It means that we don't, we cannot uh, like plan for a for a big cities or for a big I don't know country plus me place me should be localized. Should have a geographical limitation if you want to approach the use the the, the place making as an approach. It is economically different. So we uh, while uh, de developing the 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 public space, we have to take into consideration how we can. Uh, boost the local economy as well. Uh, it is scaled to each community. It means that what we can plan for a community X, we cannot replicate for the community Y. It means should be scaled, sh should be tailored to each community. Even if we are working in the same city, we cannot replicate our project. We have to start from scratch in each neighborhood or in each street we are working in. And it uh, it creates social and place capital, of course. Uh, so we have to take into consideration the local uh, potential, the social potential and the human potential and the, the potential of base as well. Uh, so placemaking uh, it, it gives the importance around the place. So everything will be around the place, the urban equity, the architecture design, the historical uh, preservation. So it is really about the place where we will be uh, work. So it is a people-centered approach, but again, it is a place-centered approach. So we have to get or to be inspired by the place. For that, we cannot uh, design uh, from our, our offices, like from, from now we're doing now, we have to go to the, to the field and we have to get inspired from each uh, feature we can see, we can encounter in the, in the place, in the public space. Uh, so, as we said, uh, placing uh, P PPS project for public space organization, they produced a lot of uh, tools that uh, we can use and we, we use uh, our place. One of them, the, mace, the most important, is what we call the place game. So, it is a kind of uh, diagram uh, that we can use to evaluate uh, our place and to see how we can make great places. So it is a kind of diagram with four uh, key attributes like sociability, access uh, and linkage, comfort and image, users and activities. So we can assess our, uh, it's a, like a, a checklist. So we can assess uh, how our public space is sociable. We have the rate for sociability. We have the rate for access and linkage. Uh, is it accessible? We have, is it far away? Is it walkable? So all the, the checklist uh, would help us to assess our public space, to see what is going, going wrong in this public space. So through a rating, and then we can see how we can improve our public space uh, based on these four uh, attributes. Uh, again, uh, they proposed uh, 11 principles of creating public spaces. So uh, the most important should be the community is the expert. Uh, again, uh, this hides the importance of the participation because for us, for place making, the community knows better than us about their needs, about their, their aspiration, about the, the problem, the, the issue of public space. So we have to deal with the community. We have to, com uh, to communicate with them. We have to negotiate with them our ideas, our vision. 
uh, you are creating a place it's not just a design it means that you have to go to the space you have to go to the place where you are creating a public space or a public space and you have to be inspired by that and to see how you can do something that that is are using the space how people uh, inhabitants are using this space and we have to be uh, inspired by all what we, we can see you cannot be alone it means that you, we have to network to to, uh, to activate to mobilize local actors in that uh, we will talk about power of 10 triangulation and lighter quicker cheaper so these are the the main principles of of uh, of place making. So to talk about qualities of uh, great public space, what we can call uh, qualities, what we, what can help us to create great public spaces, some ideas that uh, practical ideas. If we want to work on a on a on a square, for example, we don't uh, have only to focus on the square on the inner square only. We have to see the outer square as well because. The, the, the inner square is really connect, should be connected. So the, 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 uh, how to activate it, it means how to connect it with the outer square. So because sometimes if we, if we have a, a place, we, we, we work more, we focus more on the on space, on the board of the space. Placemaking asked us, ask us to go and to see what are the connection with the space. Okay, because we don't have to, uh, to work on a on a, on a separate uh, uh, base. Again, uh, reach out like an octopus. It means uh, we, if we are working on again on a piazza, we have to see uh, what what is con what is connected to this plaza. So uh, why we we have to pass through the plaza to go from where to where, and this is really important to see how we can activate this piazza. On, on, on seeing what, what can lead this piazza to. And uh, another uh, method that we use is the power of 10. The power of 10 is that in each uh, city, in each region, we have to have at least 10 plus major destinations. Uh, while talking about this, you can uh, just think about your city, about your region and about the destination have in your city 10 plus major destination or not if not you have to create then in each destination you have to think about 10 plus places to go okay so if we if we choose one destination of the 10 destination you have to find as well 10 places to go in the in the in the in one of the destination and again on the smaller scale in one place you have to find 10 things to do i give always the example of of parks if you if you have kids if you take your kids to the park five minutes later if they don't have 10 things to do they will say okay we have to go to we have to go back home because we're not enjoying here so you have at least to 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 think about 10 things to do believe me it is not impossible try to see this picture in a very small street you can at least find 10 things to do so you have to be creative while uh, you know uh, activating a, a space you have to be innovative you have to have a lot of ideas and believe me power of 10 is is really uh, is a very uh, powerful tool that you can use to activate your public space and uh, last we have the lighter quicker and cheaper lqc uh, it is how we can uh, cre create with, with low cost and light uh, design some innovative idea on, on uh, how we can, you know, activate a, a public space. 
we don't have to, to think about costly uh, design. Uh, we have to think about uh, temporary uh, uh, implementation of the project. So, and this is really important because sometimes we 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 have a lot of a lot, a lot, a lot of money. We we have a lot of uh, uh, infrastructure, and we build a, a great design, but with that the people are not using it. So in this idea, we create more temporary design, and we can uh, keep this design for for two years to test the, the interaction of the people with the design to see how people is, uh, are interacting with, with this design, with this uh, uh, you know, uh, feature, and to see if we can make it permanent or not. So uh, this is what we call the lighter, quicker, and cheaper. So we can have small intervention or low cost intervention, quick intervention to see the reaction of, of the people, like putting some sand and umbrellas, uh, you know, in the in the in the center of the city, and uh, enjoy the sun, where there is no beach. Put some uh, some games or sand, and let people really enjoy life in the city in the streets. Okay, when you focus on place, you do everything differently. So thank you. I don't know if I have I have a small movie to show. I don't know if I have time. You oh, you can uh, tell me. It's, it's, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Close. So uh, the 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 movie I will show you is uh, about a project on public spaces. Uh, done recently in in Nina. I want to see when can I find it. Excuse me. Meanwhile, Roni, um, we yeah. have a question while you're looking for the for the video. Um, it's uh, from Sarah, and she's asking, "Can you please give an example how can a short-term intervention have a long-term effect? Such as a pop-up park is there for a short while, then it's gone." How can it affect um, its, I think, stay after it's gone? I think Sara, she's talking about, you know, continuity and durability of interventions, um, place-making interventions, so. Yeah, you want me to... to uh, answer later, if you found the video, go ahead answer, with it. Yeah, I, 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 I have the movie, but, uh, okay, so. Can you see? No. Not yet, no, you have to share your screen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's great, we have 57 here, participants. <laughs> I, I hope that okay. we will have a lot of questions coming. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, now, you can see it now or you no. can, can you see? Yes, now we can see it, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Okay, but uh, for the, I don't know, for the sound, anyway, I will let, okay. I think for the sound, it will be probably, um, we won't be able to see, uh, to hear the sound, but it's- Can, can you see it? Anyway, it, it is- uh, yeah. Yes, we can see it, perfect. Can you hear? Yes. Yeah. لجنة 
بحي المساجد ومن وقتها يعني عم نتابع المشروع من بدايته اللي عم نعمله هون بترابلس نحن بالمينا بشارع المساكن بالانتراكشن مع العالم واسبشلي مع الكيدز اللي عم نعمله هون بترابلس نحن بالمينا بشارع المساكن بالانتراكشن مع العالم واسبشلي مع الكيدز تارجتنج اكثر الشيلدرنز رايت نحن على اللجنة فيعلمونا أنه لازم ننظف ونركب بالأرض لازم نحن نهتم بالمشروع كان مثلا كيف تدلي هلا أنا تعلمت أنه ما لازم نكب بالأرض مين بتحب تبلش؟ ابن الوصول أمير طيب عصبي بس قلبه طيب أبي تأكد أبلا كل شيء لطيف بس نشوف
مشروعنا بنهايته راح يساهم اكيد بتوفير بيئه افضل للاولاد الصغار لانهم يتعلموا ما تفوتوا مي عليهم ونكون حلينا 70% من المشاكل اللي بنكون عم يعاني منها المدرسه والطلاب والمعلمين بقلبنا يا يا Thank you. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie, for this um, very insightful, moving, and uh, informative presentation. I think you over completely showed also, um, you know, the importance of placemaking. And if I can resume it, is uh, placemaking allow us to build communities around places and build places around community. Um, we have a lot of, I mean, we have questions, but I think there are many questions within one question already. So it looks <laughs> like, so I would just read them if you allow me. And then of course, I think some of them could be um, answered by one, one answer. So I go back again to the question of Sara Noir. She said, can you please give an example how can a short-term intervention have a long-term effect? such as a pop-up park is there for a short while, is there for a short while, then it's gone. Um, another question from 
uh, Rania, she said, how can you engage the municipality to be part of the project? In my experience, it was very tough unless the municipality gains profit or be the master of the show. Uh, it wouldn't really help. Uh, we have Amina, she said, what are the essential parameters that define the success of a place and what grants its continuity? So it joined the question of um, the, the first question. And we have Daniel, Daniela Cassinella, she said, I'm involved in two different projects of community engagement and placemaking. Any advice on how to engage citizens um, in this difficult time? I can't do any more co-design workshop with citizens and local stakeholders face to face. So I'm planning to do them online using rural platform, but I'm worried it won't be accessible and comfortable to use for many. Curious to know how other practitioners are trying to overcome these challenges. And um, Muna, she said, was there any follow up to see how much or how such workshop helped in reaching a certain goal? And um, we have a comment for that. A place must be resilient to make it sustainable for every time and any conditions. And we have Rana Kashab, she's saying, how can a place be flexible to different functions a long time and at the same time ensure maintenance of its identity? And again, um, oh, we have here a nice, a nice comment from Daniela. Thank you. It was very insightful. So I'm just reading through. Yeah. So I hope that. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if we have time to, to tackle all the questions. I don't know if we have a possibility to, I can answer by, by uh, writing them. I, can I do that? Of course, of course. Later, can later just, on, I think. Yes, yeah. I think we can just answer. I think all of them are thinking about durability. And Daniela, we can answer her by, um, I mean, as a, as a private chat or on our group, because we have a place making men a platform group. So people yeah. can join yeah. and we can open up discussions. So it just people, I think most of them are talking about, you know, maintenance and about durability and about the way also how we are sure to engage the maximum of citizens and people. And this is, I think, yeah. something uh, crucial. Maybe if you have two minutes, while we are- Yeah, yeah I, th I think, uh, uh, first of all, what, what I did with the municipalities, I think I know the municipalities in Lebanon, they, they want, if they think about doing something, they think about it alone. So for that, I introduced the university. You know, for the, for the municipality, I think the student, university students are really the catalyzer. They can bridge the community to the municipality. I think this is what I found as, as, as really a solution for, because going by myself to the municipality, they don't mind about talking like if, and even though the community will go there. So I think going with the students to the mayor office, like we did, you know, and give the importance of the mayor. We're, we're coming here just to to give your, I don't know, your blessing for us to work in, a, in this, uh, you know, we have a way to talk to the mayors, but we have to be a group. And, you know, if you use the, the, the university, I think it is, uh, it's good for the mayor. It's for the good for the visibility of the municipality of the mayor. So sometimes we invite the mayor to the university to give a lecture. Sometimes we go, we go to with, with the student to the mayor office, you know, and this, this is very visible on Facebook, on the page of the uh, municipality. So we have a lot of, uh, you know, tool to, to use it with the, with the mayor. Again, for the, for, for the sustainability. Yeah, I think this, we are in the same, uh, Arab world, we have to, you know, <laughs> a well, lot of, uh, you know. Special approach. Yeah, I just, just to add on Lush. what you said, uh, Roni, yeah. the only thing is to believe and to think that participation as well, um, to be successful is to include everybody, uh, yeah. including the municipality are part of stakeholders and being not uh, realizing or taking into account their also needs and there, whatever its kind of need, you know, it, it, it could be mapped later on, etc. It's part of the work, yeah. uh, preparation yeah. work at the beginning. And this is will help at the same time of uh, outreaching all the stakeholders, involving them from the beginning in defining even the problems, challenges or needs, but as well aspirations. And I think it's all about understanding each others. It's about all an empathy process where design tools helped this process because when that's what Ronnie trying to say like university as well or the way it's all about a strategy it's an outreach yeah. strategy yeah. and being successful in the outreach strategy and involving everyone whatever it is if two three four 
those who want to lead after that. And I think that the idea to combine sometimes like a pop-up action, a pop-up action uh, to answer one of the question, it may to not last within time. It, the series of pop-up action or the way how it will be like for say um, planned in a way that happens in a very rhythmic way leads to a lot of change. Change doesn't happen from one day to another and as well resilience. You know, there is a, here a lot of concept that needs to be, that we need to bridge between the concept of resilience and sustainability, the concept of, you know, participation, etc. And we have to understand that people are not used to be asked for their voices or for their opinion. So it's already a burden for them, already intimidating as is such. So we need to acknowledge that and being able to phase it out. So the first phase is to be also part of the community. It takes time, but the application or let's say the intervention in itself, it's quick because at a certain way, normally people will lead up. It will be all those who participated in it and they, there is a shared knowledge. There is a kind of a bubble that has been created that will allow bit by bit people to take appropriation of their space you saw in the video that the child didn't know that he has to take care of the street, et cetera, because we used to a certain top down or colonialist thinking of the way how sea cities are managed. So this lasts for like a cultural, let's say a cultural aspect or a heritage that we think that the space doesn't belong to us. And to understand that the common here or commoning processes needs time to happen and of course this is um, we need to there are tools for that and there are ways to do it and i think that all of it should be tailored used within the context uh, context where we work on and of course we will have the time to discuss it maybe and to be able to answer all the questions later we have francesco because he was waiting for so long um we have the second presentation now uh, Francesco, you're mute. I think I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, you muted. Yes. Here you go. No, no. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, I was waiting. Yes, but I uh, enjoyed the lecture of my friend Deroni. All of us. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it's uh, one of the the roots of placemaking in this area. It's fantastic. We had uh, we met some long time ago, and uh, since then uh, we collaborate in this project of placemaking. And uh, no, yes, fine, absolutely, no problem. Let me share uh, with my screen. Uh, there it is. Okay. It's working. Yes, it's working. Okay. So uh, my, my lecture is on, uh, the, the, the title is The Arab City, Social and Cultural Aspect of Public Spaces in the MENA. Uh, why I choose this? Because there is, generally there is one problem. As you anticipate before, Ingsat, uh, there is a problem when we are talking about public spaces in a different context. If I'm talking public spaces in a European context, especially in the Northern Europe, is completely different. For example, talking public spaces on the south of Europe, like the south of Italy, which is much closer to Lebanon, to the Middle East, for example. So why this? Because there are some uh, influences and communities that uh, assume different roles into uh, the contextuality. So, in our region, for example, the, public, the, the, the idea of the public space is not belonging to us from the origin of the Arab and Islamic city, because it was based on a very, very privatistic idea of the life. So this means that there was no sense of community. And in fact, it's still existing, this problematic. There is no sense of community at all. The people is selfish, selfish, selfish. It's uh, very individualistic. The community, there is no involvement of the community. And the role on this of placemaking, as uh, uh, Ronnie showed us, for example, in the last movie, 
at the end of this presentation, this is absolutely fantastic because this paper is ready to be transformed. But from the past as well, we know that the public space has been introduced in our city, in our culture. From the Ottomans, we have the example of Tal in, uh, in Tripoli. We have the, the French colonization in Lebanon and uh, uh, Place de l'Etoile in Beirut is one of the examples. But this public space, as you even can see from the picture, are empty, are not used. Because the people doesn't have any reasons to go there. There are no activities except few restaurants or few shops. So this is one of the major problems we are facing here. I'm talking for Lebanon, where I know the situation very well. So one of the major issue is the involvement of the community. One of the most beautiful, in my opinion, example of community involvement was Uzai in South Beirut. Uzai South Beirut was a completely uh, it's illegal settlement, first of all, We're hosting 100,000 people, uh, Syrian, poor Lebanese, Iraqi, from all over Middle East. Absolutely illegal. Then one of this person living there, growing up, he was so lucky to uh, become and uh, to, 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 to make money, to evolve economically. But one of this first idea, first uh, ideal, if you want, was to revitalize Uzai, where he born and he lived. And what he did, he involved the community in the transformation of Uzai simply using colors simply using graffiti. I give you these two examples, Cinque Terre in Italy, which is worldwide famous, not only for the beauty, the beauty of the nature, but also for the color of the houses, naturally painted by the people without anybody asking to do this. And on the other side, we have Uzai, Lebanon. This, for me, these two examples are fantastic because one, in Italy, we have a very spontaneous, the other one was introduced this idea of the community. So what is the importance of the community? Because place making is based on that, on the idea of community. When, when I'm teaching to my students, for example, there are many attending today, I'm teaching them that we are working for the community. We are designing for the community. We are acting for the community. This is an idea that should be instilled. It's our role as well as a teacher, not only as a designer or practitioners, but also as a teacher to instill in the new generation in our regions, this idea of the community to us is not existing. It's really not existing. So this is one of the major problems that we are facing on. We are talking about, uh, Ronnie told us about uh, Jane Jacobs, uh, all this uh, famous theorist. But uh, uh, I remember that also Kevin Lynch in a famous book, Image of the City, he introduced the idea of the involvement of the citizens for the urban analysis. So this involvement of the citizen not, is not only to a practical involvement, but also a passive involvement, active and passive. So how do you recognize your place? Before Uzai was unrecognizable was a banlieue, South Beirut, near a garbage deposit, near the airport, 
known only for a, a road, a market street, for a cheap price of the brothers, but that's all. And the people who were scared go there. I remember when I did this project with my student, and I invite them to go on site for the site visit and the analysis, they say, no, sorry, professor, I can't go there, it's too dangerous. I say, what? There is no place dangerous, guys. Depend on which attitude we go there. So they, I insisted, they went there, and at the end, they enjoyed it. They say, yes, you were right. The people there is very friendly, help, help us a lot. A kid we've been blocked by some militias because we are taking picture. But then if the militia was helping them. So because they, people want to be, it's, the people is curious, the people want to be involved anyway in every action, in every project. So, there is this big transformation in Uzai, which attract. Okay, now we are in the lockdown, we have the pandemic, in, a, in Lebanon there is the economical crisis, there are no tourists, etc. But before that, tourists coming from abroad were visiting Uzai. Like people coming from abroad are going to visit the Cinque Terre in Italy. And this is due to what? Due to the community. And this is not only to beautifying, because we have to beautify, we have to create a better way of life of the people, et cetera, et cetera. But also, we have to think also to the local economy. Mainly, our cities suffering on this. Tripoli, Ronnie showed us before, Tripoli, north of Lebanon, which is the poorest city in Lebanon, actually, where more than 60% of the population is extremely poor. They need also to revamp their economy. Place making and our action also help this. We can't forget this problematic. Absolutely. And as the policeman said, for example, when you involve the, the, the people, there is less criminality. The kids, I saw the kids cleaning the street, which was long time ago, in Tripoli especially, more than Beirut, the people were used to do, was used to clean the street. So this is, a growing and important aspect of what we are doing, of what we are, or how we are implementing. The public spaces, going back to the idea of the public spaces, that are not de facto existing, are existing only when there are political rallies, like in the revolution of October, the Saura, in the 17th of October, we have on the left, we have a roundabout on Tripoli, and on the right side, we have Place de Martyr on Beirut. During the, the rest of the year, this area are completely empty. There is absolutely nothing. Place de, Place de Martyr Beirut is a big parking. And Place de Martyr Beirut was born due to the Ottomans, as a public space. In the origin was a private private space where you have to pay a fee to enter in. Later on, they open it to everyone and had been transformed. But also, even during the year, the only period when Plus de Martyr, for example, was alive was in the golden age of Lebanon in the 50s and the 60s, before the Civil War, was full of activity. It was a garden in the middle of the piazza, it was the terminal of the taxi, there was commercial activities. So when we are thinking public spaces, we can't 
think in our region I'm talking we can think the public spaces as we are conceived in Europe or United States where they are not existing the public spaces has been imported later on as we are importing from them for example the mall the shopping center which is a kind of uh, mixed let's say between a piazza a square and the commercial street so it's been important so this contamination that we have is so important but we have to keep on mind where so we have to keep in mind the genius logic where we're applying our project our idea what which community which people are we dealing with if i'm dealing with the people of tripoli which is is completely different for example acting from people to greece because in greece they have a strong it's a very eradicated idea of the public spaces from their history they create the agora the idea the maximum idea of the democracy where the people meet and discuss everything and the agora was religious commercial political i mean was very active in our countries this is not existing sometime Dubai is an example for many designer, for many researcher, for many student. It's the wrong example. Absolutely, it's a wrong example. Dubai has nothing to do with Middle East. Nothing. Ninety-five percent of the residents are expatriates, which uh, continues to turn over. Doesn't have inhabitants. So why? is important why i want to emphasize and reinforce the idea of the community but in terms of social aspect of the community because this is the root for every project i can't place a same project here and the same project in rome or in uh, Madrid, or in Valencia, or in Lyon, is completely different approach, completely different mentality. Place making, for example, is not working properly, properly in the northern country of Europe, because the mentality of the people is working much better in the southern Europe where the mentality of the people is open, it is more searchable. This is important to keep in mind for those who are acting into place making, into this idea that we are sharing. Our street, our city are these two images, street vendors, and cars, kids playing on the road or on the stairs because there are no places. Can we introduce their public space, the idea of the public space involving the community? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. This is not only an urban design necessity, but it's a social necessity a community necessity for me what we are doing our philosophy is the basic element of a good approach to the idea of the city how can we transform them it's another issue it's another issue but the idea to help the community economically. For example, that area on the left picture where you have the street vendor and the car could be easily transformed. 
these street vendors are stay there even in summer with 40 degrees, for example. But the problem is that somebody said before in one of these questions replying that the municipalities sometimes are not responding to this. And this is true. This is reality. Because the municipalities sometimes they are show off. They are too much party related, which is a huge problem, especially in our country. Ronnie knows very well what I'm talking about. It's a fight with them to convince them the importance and the necessity to intervene. Of course, yes, the project could be extremely simple and extremely cheap. These are examples how to transform the spaces in a livable area without, without very expensive cost, without nothing. On the left, how much it will cost? $1,000 maximum. On the right side, how much? $500 are pallet. Generally, they throw the pallet. So it's a matter of, also of regeneration of the materials. Also, there's two examples. The street. The life on the street. In our city, the life is on the street. Not on the piazza are on the street or the street or the cafeteria or the restaurant, which are not public spaces, but private spaces. But the street is the major element, the major social element where we can find people, where the people sit outside also of these houses, chatting to each other, like in the south of Italy, it's part of the Mediterranean mentality, this. But can we, transform can we be make these places more livable more attractive and to instill in the people in the community the idea of the community itself i think yes it is possible i think from the past when it was so privatistic the life and with the contamination of other culture looking around because now we are in the era of the technology we have the, in the era of the internet where can i watch through the the, the 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 street camera everywhere in the world what's going on so we can learn from this yes we can but we can learn from this applying to the local society to the local mentality to the local community i strongly recommend to my student to the pressure to don't force this never force that it's not a problem of material of color it's a problem to the people should feel to belong to that place this is the meaning, this is the important, this is the winning solution. What a public space should be. I'm going to conclude my, my, my short presentation. Public space must be protected, comfortable, and enjoyable for people spending time there with three major components, without basic protection from cars, noise, rain, and wind. And people will generally avoid spending time in a space without elements that make walking, using a wheelchair, standing, sitting, seeing, and conversing comfortable, a place won't invite people to stay. Great public spaces tend to offer positive aesthetic and sensory experiences, take advantage of local climate, and provide human scale elements so visitors don't feel lost in their surrounding. 
this is something important this can be applied everywhere it's not a matter to different society not a matter of contamination it's not a matter of social or uh, sorry local community this is a kind of international standard so what we have to to do at the end is to take into consideration where we apply our idea how we are involving the community i don't know the community for example in morocco which are different from the community in lebanon they have other cultural influences but i have first at all and this is for the practitioner and for the urban designer i have to be so modest to study this community before to be involved in that i have to study the history of the place without the history of the place and without knowing the cultural habit of the community i can completely fail my approach to public space especially coming from abroad from another country knowing anything about that so this idea that we are sharing of place making is in my opinion the most successful idea we can apply to our communities but taking in consideration what i said before otherwise even with the most beautiful ideas or project this could fail we saw this in the 70s and the 80s and in the 90s big failing in urban designing because overimposing in a community some models first of all without the involvement of the community second thing because this model are not belonging to that society so the municipality spend a lot of money to create beautiful okay beautiful piazza or beautiful street whatever but empty because the people doesn't recognize these places as places to belong to. So my lecture has this target to instill the idea and the importance of the study of the history and the society before every kind of intervention. It's important, it's important to understand first. I can't apply what I'm doing in Tripoli, Lebanon to Mubarak, to Baghdad, let's say, or to Tehran. No? Or Rabat or Mina, Saudi Arabia. Completely different, completely different. I did many projects in my, my life in the Middle East, but every time I try to understand the local community. So the importance of every placemaker and every role that this placemaker has to do is this one, to understand, to understand first. I think I'm, uh, I'm done, being uh, quite short, but uh, I hope it was, it was clear my, my vision, my intention.
It was lovely, Francesco. It was really nice uh, presentation. And I think that you said it all. And um, it's also, um, I'm very happy because today it's the launch of the series of lectures that I hope that it will continue next year, sharing knowledge, sharing our experience and talking uh, about, you know, I think the two things that we can uh, have from this discussion today is that first of all, um, you know, we talked about placemaking. It's more like an ethos. It's something, a character, it's a beliefs, it's a set of, uh, you know, way of how we can uh, characterize our communities. So it's a kind of mentality to, to be able to share and to discuss and to negotiate and to be able to create the space for it. And as well, you showed with your presentation that there is a huge work on governance, either local, formal or informal governance. It's something very, very important that leads that people should decide upon the way how they use always their... always 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 people should decide exactly. always and to see the room or let's say the breach from where we can at least see it and also something that is very important to share about with our audience today is we have to take off the hat of being an expert this idea of coming with the expertise to show people how they should live their space and how they can you know, we intervene in their decision making in the way where we know today that we are in a context of conflict. Sometimes we are in this phase where we have to take care about this peace building processes. We have to be aware about the way how the space, uh, the political dimension of the space. Space is not, um, you know, neutral. Uh, to be able to create places for people and with people it's a whole process and i think that the diagram or let's say the methodologies of place making are quite you know open and leave us a room to be able um to discuss and to develop more our this notion or this concept of public space uh, because it's always you know for us you know we learn this public space because we learn as well architecture and urban design and uh, urbanism and urban planning based on also occidental the theories and uh, mm -hmm. and dogmas and this is also something very important for the students or for the young practitioners to acknowledge that there is a huge work to be done towards uh, you know creating also our own tools related to our own context and within that uh, we won't be able, as you said, uh, we end up failing, we end up not engaging the community, we end up with projects that are completely demolished after we have been pouring so much effort into them. And I think that this is something that we need to be also invited ourselves uh, within the community. This is the first thing to take care uh, of it before starting really, um, you know, uh, it's not a science place making it. I think it's more, as I said, it's a mentality away of creating common spaces. So um, thank you right. very much for your presentation both. I was thank you, thank you for inviting me. Um, and also I wanted to just to say uh, that um, Francesco and Roni are part of placemaking uh, MENA platform. Roni is the founder, of course. And uh, we will have a series of lectures that you will see in, on our Facebook, uh, I mean, event has been published already last week. We will be starting next week also Lilkol project, incubation project for uh, seven projects within the MENA region. Uh, we are very, very excited for this new experience. Um, and please send us your questions and your comments on our group, Facebook group. Uh, and you can send them as well by email because here I shared it already on the chat box, um, how you can uh, where you can send your 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 question, and we will share them with everyone, with answers. So thank you. Yes. I think there is a Reem. Reem has say something. something to do to say. Yeah. Yes. Hello, guys. First of all, <laughs> thank you very much for the incredible lectures you both presented, Roni and Francesco, and like I I just had a thought that I would like to share with you guys is um, like. After seeing your lectures, it's so obvious that it's really important to educate the people and the process. 
because um, as you mentioned, Francesco, in Lebanon, we don't have like this idea of public space and this idea of sharing something. It's very somehow individualistic because for example, once I was talking about the concept of a community garden and someone said, but what if I plant and they take? So we really need to um, educate people about this process so they can learn to work together and they can know their rights and their responsibilities as well towards this public space because they that's how they can relate to this public space. Definitely, definitely. I agree 100%. Uh, I would like just uh, if we have some time, some minutes to see who are the audience coming from? Where are they? Oh yes, so maybe here we. I will. I will ask everyone to unmute. <laughs> so maybe that they, they can. Uh, we have University of Malta, Daniela. So she's. So you can you can write it in the chat, uh, please. So Ronnie wants to know from where. Uh, where are you today? <laughs> so we have Phoenicia University. We have Morocco, Casablanca. We have German uh, University in Jordan. We have University of Basra. We have Alba University of Balamond. We have Egypt. We have Beirut. We have Great. University Egypt. Again, Phoenicia University. Yeah, we have we have a huge. We have Egypt HBRC as well. So we have AAST Egypt as well. Egypt, it's, it's also in Lebanon and Morocco and Valencia, España. <laughs> wow, great. Yeah. So that's we great. also have Ecuador. <laughs> Ecuador, fantastic. That's, that's, fantastic. That's spreading the word. <laughs> spreading the word, yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. We have to spread the word. Please make it yeah. to be all over, all over. <laughs> We have, an important, we have an important social roles, guys. And it's really important social roles. I'm role. also intervening too much. And I love talking. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, we have to make sure that especially languages are very, very crucial in what we are saying because public space is good to stick to what we explain it today because we have public space and public space different, like espace public with a Q and espace public with a C. This is make this also people have to understand these two notions and the uh, and the understanding and we will go through that um through the lecture that you will have the definition of public space because this is also something crucial to understand which public space are we talking about you know all these definition all these words yeah, it's uh, maybe we'll be able to have a glossary and i know that some people who have been working on that we have also mexico and we have Rotterdam. Um, so, um, so we have a lot of questions as well. So he has, perhaps we could look at what legislation is in place in order to promote public spaces. This is also something very important. Mm. Public mm. policies, that's why it's a between top down, bottom up. We are not really situating ourselves in, in kind of saying grassroots only. It's also, it links, you know, to the, we are trying to bridge between urban development, urban planning, urban design since the 50s, where we have this breach, or that's a kind of divorce with the school of thought, um, you know, of, of architecture, this top down or uh, blueprint plan uh, planning. And we will try, you see policy making is part of the analysis that an expert should, should, should do, first of all. And uh, we're trying to, at least, I think uh, in the MENA region, there is a lot we need to acknowledge there's a lot that is uh, that are of efforts and projects that are um, happening the last 10 years that are changing actually the policies and changing the way how people are occupying uh, their public space. And so I, I can say that public space is kind of emerging. We are in this phase where some our public spaces is emerging in the MENA region, as Francesco said, it's something, there are some social transformation happening uh, recently. So, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> we see you next week. So at the same time um, and looking forward. Thank you very much for everyone. Bye-bye, take care. <laughs>